Wednesday is here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful day. Gorgeous day. Gorgeous. We opened our windows up. So we're going to do Job 38 because we got a question. Mm -hmm. We'll deal with that question in a minute. Yep. But we're going to go back to Job 38 again. And then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will question you. And you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out of the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swallowing, swaddling band? and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far you shall come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. I bit my tongue yesterday, so I'm having Ugh. trouble. Ouch. It's like swollen in the side of my mouth. Ouch. It hurts. Um, so it's a little hard to read today. So got an email from someone yesterday that said, um, we, we've been talking about storms, mm -hmm. the gospel lesson, God speaking out of the whirlwind, um, and they, they ask the question, if God's got everything in his control, then how do we talk about storms and, mm -hmm. um, hurricanes and droughts and those kinds of things? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing to be said is we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Need to put that out there way in advance. We don't. We don't know. And, and in fact, and in fact, this lesson emphasized the fact, emphasizes the fact that we don't know. Yeah. God, God basically calls all of Job, Job's friends, all of humankind to account in the fact of you can ponder and hypothesize, but you weren't there. So you don't You'll know. You'll never understand. Right. Exactly. <laughs> You'll know when you, you know, are on the other side and you can ask those questions. But as people who sit here and wonder, does, you know, does God lift up these things to teach us something or, you know, we just sit and ponder and go, we, we don't really know. Right. It's just, we're just being honest in the fact that we don't, we don't have a good answer for that. But God also says that he does know hmm. in this. He does know. And not only that, but as wild as things get, hmm. it's almost like, you know, who prescribed the limits Yeah. of how far this is going to go? Who said, yeah, you're going to rage out of, seemingly out of control, mm -hmm. storm, drought, mm -hmm. whatever it is. But actually, I've actually hemmed it in. You know, I yeah. actually, I actually know, I hate to use the word control, but yeah, I, I know how far this goes. Well, and I think that line is sort of in there, too, of, of God says, you know, thus far you shall go and no further. Mm -hmm. That that maybe if you want to, to get into the control part, God God's not going to let there be complete and total, you know, a, a, a hurricane to lay siege to an entire right. nation state. Right. And, or an entire region or the entire earth. But God's going to say, you know, you have a function. Your weather, you you do what you do, but here's here's the little area. Like you know, there aren't there aren't hurricanes in in Minnesota, thankfully. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Thankfully. Right. But they are to a particular mm -hmm. part, so they have a they have a boundary. They have you know, thus far you shall go and no further. But it, it's hard to it's really hard to answer these questions because then you get into, you know. Is God just sitting upstairs pushing, you know, the, all right, the drought. We haven't had a drought in, you know, 64 days. Let's push that button. Right. Or we haven't had a hurricane in, you know, it's that time again. It's that season again. Here we go. Um, those are questions I think we wrestle with as people. Is, is God up there just pushing buttons and things happen versus God creates and the world does what it does, and we seek meaning for ourselves and for God out of those things. 
Yeah, and you know, John, one of the one of the lines out of the Psalms that I love that it was just a handful of weeks ago mm -hmm. was talking about what God created, and it said He created Leviathan and the great sea monsters mm -hmm. and the ocean in which to let it sport. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's funny because on the one hand, as a reader of that, I've always thought to myself. Well, why in the world would God create sea monsters to threaten us? And then on the other hand, there is a sense in which God's creative power. Now, of course, largely, except Loch Ness Monster, we've disproven sea yeah. monsters. And I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, there really are not sea monsters per se, um, but it but that that scripture gets at the threatening nature of the seas, mm -hmm. and so the question is, you know, why would God create such threatening things, whether sea monsters or in our gospel lesson this week storms that rise up quickly on the Sea of mm -hmm. Galilee. And, and we don't know. We don't understand. Hmm. Um, we don't know why that happens, and, and I can't answer that question. I can say that in those times, there are many opportunities for us to see God and to show one another Jesus Christ hmm. through our love and our care there is a confession of faith that even comes out of the loss of life not that that is a point or purpose or goal of those events I'm not saying that but there is a place in which our faith is able to lay situations, lives or lives lost, faithfully in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. And as we talked about with Job and with the disciples, to simply trust. Uh, we talked a couple weeks ago about... Um, Faith without sight. Yeah. The last week or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we can't see these things. We don't know these things. Trusting is what we hold on to. Yeah. I think to that point, I think we experience that in, in maybe two ways. There's the the more familiar God calming the storms in our life, which we've all sort of heard. But there's also God calming God's children in the midst of the storm. And I think both I think both of those our our faith speaks into that we whether whether God is, you know, actively quelling the things that work us well in this life, or God is reminding us, you know, with what Jesus says in in the gospel lesson of peace be still God reminds us that there's not a single thing that besets us in this life that causes us worry or anxiousness or or trouble that God's not able to to step into speak into mm -hmm. or, or or tend to us in the midst of I think that's kind of the for me that's the big picture of all of this of God reminds us I'm still God there's not a single thing in the world that I've created that isn't within my my power or my purview to to deliver you from or or calm you in the middle of. Yeah. Because the question about that we got about storms and droughts and everything is no different than I think, you know, why do people get sick? Yeah. Why do young children die and I don't, I don't have an answer for that. No. And, and I also don't think it happens to teach us something. Because mm -mm. I think Jesus answered that 
clearly. You know, why was this man born blind? You know what I mean? Who, who sinned? Who yeah. sinned? Is, is there some lesson here? Like, don't sin because if you do that, yeah. you know, don't do this because otherwise this bad thing is going to happen and you're going to... I don't, I don't think there's a, there's a teaching that happens because of it. I think the world simply is imperfect. And it's imperfect because, one, it's not the kingdom of heaven. And two, because human beings are actors in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And because of that imperfection, we are constantly needing to cling to the one promises us life and um, it's not a lesson but I do think that we can learn out of it Mm -hmm. some people the lesson that they take from it is something like oh God doesn't exist or God doesn't care but I think part of the point for me of of you know kind of the the ritual and the tradition of worship and prayer and learning within the church is to equip us for when those times come that we yep. don't look through a lens of anger and hatred and loss but that we look through a lens of faith and so and through that lens we see our loss and our grief and the loneliness and the emptiness but hopefully also in there we see hope and life and cross and empty tomb and resurrection and a God who promises us that there's nothing in all creation that separates me from your love. Not all these storms or droughts or floods or anything like that. Hmm. No. You think, the world thinks that and it's very easy to look at the world and imagine that that's what's happening. But here's the truth. But here's the truth. That none of that. And it's funny because you can go all the way back to the to the um, VeggieTales song. Mm -hmm. God is bigger than the boogeyman. (laughs) He's bigger than the spiders or the monsters on TV. Something like that. Yeah. You know that whatever the world throws at us. I haven't heard that song in. It's been a long time. Decade, at least. Uh, Pejoratively, we can say God is bigger than that, but. In faith language that none of that stuff separates us from God's love mm-hmm. they all look like the big scary things in the world but God says yeah I've I've given them all a boundary mm-hmm. they go this far yeah they scare you because you allow them to scare you look at me mm-hmm. look at my love yeah. that's how I think of it yeah. I hope that helps I hope that helps and price sure let us pray Gracious God, you stand above all creation and your love cannot be contained. It needs to be shared and shaped and given freely to the world. Lord, we look at the world in which we live and we're often terrified. We're scared of the things that we don't know. We're scared of the people who think differently than we might We're scared that the world is bigger than we are. Lord, as we go about our day today, help us remember that your love is woven into every single fabric of this world in which we walk and we move and we have our being. That you are standing above all of it and keeping things in their proper bounds. That your love permeates all of it, keeping us in your grace, in your mercy, and in your truth. The truth that nothing is bigger than you, nothing is greater than your grace, nothing is deeper than your mercy for us and for all people. Lord, we pray this in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Take care.